My name is Sarah Bishop. I am known as the Hermitist of West Mountain, as the nun of the mountain. I have been asked to speak to you today because I am a woman of the streets. Sarah Bishop Road in Ridgefield is named after me. Why? Because I am a historical character in Ridgefield. In the 1700s, I came by ship and then by foot from Stanford to live for 30 years on a cliff in a small cave or outcropping on the border of Ridgefield and South Salem. Why did I come to live in this cave for 30 years with no amenities? I was traumatized, very traumatized. I had to leave to survive. I left, but I can't talk about my trauma, but it is in books. Read Scott O'Dell's book on Sarah Bishop. There are four versions of my trauma. I cannot talk about which one is correct. You choose based on my story. The first stories are love stories. They say I was engaged to a handsome, rich man that I loved passionately on Long Island. The day before our marriage, he told me he did not love me, he found somebody else. I was distraught. I left the area. I came and found peace in Ridgefield. The other love story. I was in love with a British soldier. My parents were patriots. The British had killed their relatives, had burned houses of relatives, and I was in love with a British soldier. They were furious. They locked me in the house. They kept me away from them. I escaped and came to Ridgefield. The other stories were of capture. After battles on Long Island, I was captured. I was thrown into a ship. I had to care for, clean, cook, and service the men on that ship. I was so abused when I was able to escape, I did. In the last story, I was captured and because I was young and beautiful and smart. I was given to the captain of the ship, a disgusting, old, mean man. My life was hell and I escaped. Coming a ship to Stanford and climbing up and up to get away from my trauma. I climbed high on the cliffs in Ridgefield. I looked out. I could see from these cliffs my beloved ocean, my beloved Long Island. This is where I would stay for the next 30 years.
I found an outcropping. It wasn't really a cave. Six feet by six feet. There was a rock. I put grass and hay. I slept there. I made a little place for a fire inside. I had one dress that I brought with me from Long Island. I had always with me my Bible and my cross. In the winter, when it was cold and horrible and the snows came, I had a bark door that I made that I put over my cave. My utensils were gourds. I had a pot. Outside of my cave, I had a small garden. Cucumbers, potatoes, onions, peas, beans, and carrots. Long pond had fish. It was nearby. There were wild fruit trees. There were berries. There were roots. There were herbs. I was able to live off the land. Who were my friends? My friends were the animals that were all around me. I was like an animal whisperer. I loved the wolves, the coyotes, the deer, the muskrat, the squirrels, the chipmunks, the birds, any type of rodent. And in the winter, they would sleep with me. They would keep me warm. The only time I left my cave was on Sunday. On Sunday, I would walk three miles to the center, to the town green, to listen to Reverend Goodrich in the Congregational Church. Never did I go inside. I would sit on the steps, holding my Bible, listening to the prayers, the hymns, and the sermons. People were used to seeing me when they came out. They were good to me in Ridgefield. They brought me food, yarn, material, things that I could use. If it was bad weather, they would invite me, especially the Hoyt family, to come to eat at their house. I would never go inside. I would sit on the porch. If it was a stormy day, I might go inside and stay over. I would sleep on the floor in the kitchen in front of the stove. I would never sleep in a bed again. One day, I was going home from a stormy evening at the Hoyts. I slipped on a rock going up to my cave. I fell to my death breaking my neck, getting lodged in between the rocks. 
No one missed me until Sunday. I was not on the steps of the church. They looked for me. They found me. They were in shock. They provided me with a funeral and a burial in an unmarked grave in South Salem. You may have heard of the leather man. His story is like mine and not like mine. He was not from the United States. He was from France. He wanted to marry the love of his life. He had to prove himself to his father-in-law by running a leather business. He was unsuccessful. For penance, he took himself to the United States and found an area near where I was, Pound Ridge, Danbury, and Ridgefield, 20 to 30 years after I lived here. Also to punish himself, he wore 60 pounds of leather, even in the summer. Like me, he always carried a Bible, had a cross. He lived in caves, not one cave, many caves. He traveled 365 miles every 34 days, sleeping in the nearest cave. For food, he would stop at the same people's houses, point to his mouth, and they would give him food. He did not die in an accident. He chewed tobacco, he got cancer, and he died of cancer on the side of the road. He was buried in an unmarked grave. What does the story tell you? Our stories show we were strong. We were resilient. We did what we had to to survive. In the 17 and 1800s, there were no counselors. There were no clinics to help you. We used getting away from the area where the trauma was found. We relied on nature, on religion, and having only the most basic necessities. It helped to keep us sane. I'd like to read the Reverend Goodrich's son, Peter Parley, and what he wrote about me. For many a year, the mountain hag was a theme of village wonder for she made her home in the dizzy crag where the eagle bore his plunder. Up the beetling cliff, she was seen at night like a ghost to glide away. But she came again in the morning light from the forest wild and gray. I hope next week you will turn in again. The woman of the street, 
that you will hear about is Liz Leonard. Route 116, Liz Leonard Highway. That is what we will be talking about. Thank you.